Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for giving us the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you because of what he means for every one of us who believe. And we thank you for the revelation you have given us in your word concerning our Savior and Lord. We are asking that day by day as we read and study your word, we will know Jesus more and more in his name. And at all that he has provided, all that he has done, all that Calvary means, all that his blood has provided, we pray that the Holy Spirit will reveal more and more to us in Jesus' name. We are asking all Lord, as we come to your word again today, that you'll grant us fresh understanding, that you'll grant us a heart that will want to determine to understand your word, that will not just pass over your word and thinking we cannot understand. Reveal Christ to us more out of the scriptures. And as we know him more, we will love him more. We will serve him more. And we will receive from him more. But everything he means will be relevant to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. We come once again to study the word of God as we do every week here. As we would have seen, there is so much revealed in the word of God. And the study of the word of God strengthens our faith. The more we understand the word of God, the more solid we are in our conviction. There are things that we get from the word of God by I just simply reading the word of God. And the normal, casual, regular reading of the word of God refreshes us a lot. There are a lot of things we can get on the surface just reading the word of God. It's like in the world in which we live. There are fruits you can get gather, you can collect on the surface on the ground. And the produce or the product or the fruit of the land, you can get quite a lot just by picking the fruit on the ground. Gathering those things superficially on the surface, you may think that is all that is provided. And yet to see there are people that dig into the soil. And then when you dig into the soil, there are some kinds of fruit you receive while you dig a little. And yet to realize the farmers that dig, they may dig out the yam, they may dig out cassava, they may dig out other fruit. They never dig out to the point they get water coming for them. But you see, the well diggers are the people that dig deeper a little more, and now they have the supply of water for the community. And yet, the people that dig given for water, they do not dig enough, they don't dig deep enough to be able to have the minerals hidden in the soil for the riches and for the prosperity of the nation. And it's the same thing when we come to the study of the word of God. There are some normal, regular blessings you can receive just by casually reading the Bible. 
wa iboko kan wa to je pe iye boko iboko ye pere kan tabi ibukun olofege kan ti a le re pade ni gbati aba kan ka bibeli lasan and the average believer reading the bible on his own without too much digging deep into the word can receive some benefit from the reading and personal study of the word o ni gbagbo sakala kan to kan ka oro olorun fun rara re iru eniyan be o le se alaba pade awon iboko die sugbon ti ko ni ri oju lowo e to wa ninu awa jile kiko oro olorun that uh, come into the word of God and they dig a little deeper and they can have the fruit and they can have the produce and they can have the product out of the word and you will realize that goes beyond my little understanding when I had my quiet time. Our Christian in me not what you want to do with the duty and what you want to do with the duty and what you want to do with the duty and what you want to do with the duty and what you want to do with the duty and what you want to do with the duty and yet the riches of the kingdom the riches to bless the whole church the riches are to become the spiritual prosperity for the national church for the church in the whole continent for the church in the whole world you cannot get like that you need now to specially get into the world and dig deep and deep and deep enough until you get the minerals the riches the resources hidden in the word of god for the people that are equipped to dig into it for the benefit of the rest of the church so ba awon oro kan ti so orilede de oloro to je pe yo je ki gbogbo agbala aye ko ni anito ati aniseku iru eleyi aki kan ri pa pe ki akan ma wa lasan so ba awon ti won le wa lejin ti won wa ile yejin awon to ti gbara won di lati wa wa jinle iru awon be lo le mu awon won aluma ni to se ye biye yi lati fi bo ijo olorun ni gbogbo agbaye that's the reason we come together and we look at these uh, verses of scripture together and try to dig deep into the scriptures for the benefit of the individual or the family of our local church here of our churches all over the nation of churches beyond the nation idi wa niyan to bi je pe ni gbogbo gba la ma nwa sin ti an lakaka lati tubo wa wa jinle ki o ba le je pe a o salaba pade awon sura eleeti o ja si ibuku fun enikokan fun ebi kokan fun iya ajo wa ni bi fun ijo ni gbogbo orilede yi ati ni ijo wa ni oke okun lorun today we have come to the nice chapter of the hebrews loni ati wa si ori kesan iwe beru and it is talking about covenants again ba kan na lo to so nipa ma je mule kan si there is such a lot to say about the covenants that he had not finished everything in chapter 8 opolopo nkan ni a si fe so ninu nipa ma je mu na ele to je pe ko pari re nu ori kejo chapter 8 makes us to understand there are two important essential covenants ori kejo o je ki o ye wa pe ma je mu meji ti o se pataki ti o se biye biye wa he calls one the first o pe kini ni akoko he calls the other one the new o pe keji ni tutun the first one the old akoko yi ni ti ma je mu lai lai the new one the better e keji ni e ti o daraju the first one for his Israel. The second one for all believers all over the world. The first one limited in its provision. The new covenant unlimited in its provision and promises. The first one mediated through faulty sinful uh, priesthood. But the second covenant, the last covenant, the latter covenant, the better covenant, the new covenant through Jesus Christ, the perfect Son of God. So ba ti ekeji ele ti o dara ju lo ti o se maje mo tonto ele ti o se ti o saju ti saju lo el ni ti o se alari na re o na ni Jesus eni pipe. The first one had a limited duration. Ati akoko oni odi won akoko re if it was for the time at that time o wa fun igba ye fun akoko na but the second one is until the end of the age so ba ti ekeji o wa titi aye ti o titi o pe aye the first one was established by the blood of animals ti akoko agbe lori eje awon eranko but this second one the new covenant the better covenant by the blood of the lord jesus christ so ba ti ekeji yi ma jemu ti o dara ju lo ma jemu toto yi o wa lori eje jesus christ 
first one are to be cancelled. The second one will never be cancelled. The first one at fault. The second one does not have fault. The first one was the ministration of days. This second one is the ministration of life. And then we are told that the promises of this second one, they are, they are better promises. And now after he has told us the limitation of the first and the unlimited nature of the second, he now wants to go into chapter 9 and tell us some details about that old covenant. He was writing to the Hebrews Jewish people. You see, the Jewish people, they knew they were given that covenant from the Lord. They had already said some things about the old covenant in chapter 8. Some of the things they said will bring worry and confusion in the minds of the people people of uh, the Hebrew race. But for example, he had said that that false covenant had some faults. Because of those faults, it had to be taken away so that the second will replace it. The question in their mind, how will a perfect God make an imperfect covenant. He told them that the first one was to be cancelled. How can the God that changes not change the covenant he had made with the children of Israel? He said the first covenant was limited. How can the eternal unlimited God make a limited covenant with his people? And so Paul the apostle writing this, he needed to be able to answer those questions and tell them the reason for the second covenant, for the latter covenant, for the new covenant, the better covenant. Also, they will be reluctant to give up what they had got before. You see those children of Israel, they say, I got it, we got this from the Lord, this old covenant, we got it from the Lord, we are never going to release it for another thing. And therefore, Paul the Apostle needed to still explain further to them and tell them the reasons why the first had to be abandoned so that now the second is established. With illustration, he gave them illustration. He said the first was like a shadow waiting until the substance will arrive. It said the shadow is because there is a sun and it is sun that casts the shadow but then now the shadow needs to pass away that the substance may be established. Before the substance comes, the shadow is necessary. It's a shadow that makes us to understand there is reality somewhere. There is substance somewhere. And this shadow, every time we see this shadow, there is confidence in us. There is faith in us. We know that the substance is coming. And therefore, the shadow is a necessary a kind of forerunner for the substance that was to come. Nitori, Ojiji, 
o jiji ti a sin ri o fi wa lokan bale o nje ka ni gba kele ati igbagbo wi pe daju daju oju lowo nbe ni nbikan nitori na o jiji se dandan gege bi ani ti o la ona fun oju lowo lati wole wa have you seen some of the builders that build these uh, skyscrapers and these uh, magnificent buildings o wa ti ri awon omo le ti won ma nwo ti won ma nko ile alawo si fila ele to to bira batabi and uh, when they those who are going to pay they will put things around and those who are going to consult those things the scaffolding you see all the wood you see all the iron you see everything there all that's not the building itself but then the building once the building is finished we don't need the scaffolding anymore all those things are removed because the building has now arrived <laughs> lati le jeran lowo lati je ki a pari leyen awon akabayi gan kon ni le ni gere ti a ba ti yanju ile ti a ba pari re tan a o ni lu awon akabayi mo rara the scaffolding was necessary at its own time awon akabayi a tegun yi a ni lo won ni akoko ti won look at it from another angle fi ha mi ran wo bayi look at the little little beautiful toys we put in the hands of toddlers of little children e wo wo awon oyin se re bi omo langidi ti a ma fun awon omo ikoko those toys are very important they are very essential in the nursery in the kindergarten all those things are the major part of learning a lesson but you see when those children when they go to maturity and understanding the toys are abandoned because now the reality has arrived ati awon omo ibadagba toju bo awon omo langidi ati awon omo awon nkan se re won yi won ni lohun re mo tori pe ohun julowo ti re if you now as you're sitting down as adults here if you begin to uh, have uh, maybe the uh, toys of a little car of a cart or something and then you are rolling it on the ground we look at you we say what happened to you you have not come into the new covenant you have not abandoned the old covenant you have not abandoned your toys you are older than that now abandon that reality has now come ka wi pe gege bo se dagba to toju bo yi ki iru agba lagba bi ti re ko wa mu keke omo de tabi ma tu omo de ko wa ma yi ko ma wo teli leyin awon eyan mo we pe ki a lo de ba agba lagba rugo ara to tun fi agba lagba jamuda nigba to ba nse ru nkan ba yen iwo go o ti fi ma je mo lai lai sile nno ma je mo ti to ti de ma bo sinu re and so that's the reason they were told now abandon the old that was the toy that was the kindergarten that was the little little thing they were playing with that was a shadow now the substance has come the reality has come jesus christ the mediator of the new covenant he has now arrived abandon the old and come into the new ni baya wa so fun won wi pe gbogbo awon ohun se re iwon yen ti ma je mo lai lai ni fi won sile te ri omo de ni ni baye ma je mo ti tun eleyi ti jesu christ je alari na re o ti de baya ti fi de re mo le ma bo sinu ma je mo but he wanted to tell them that if they remain with the old covenant they were going to be so much limited o wa fe bi ye won gba gba pe to ba je pe ma je mo lai lai ni won si di mo sibe sibe o di won de ni won yo wa that's what we are telling the adults on ta so fun awon agba if you keep on counting the stones and counting the sticks of matches before you can add together you will never go far in mathematics so ba je pe ko to se siro wa kakuta wa kagisa na tiru agbalagba bi ti re ba tun se be o ni ma we siro daradara if you do not go beyond counting stones counting sticks before you hand before you subtract you will be so limited in your knowledge in your understanding of that science subject to ba je pe o ti kuro ni po pe ka ma kakuta ka ma kagisa na ka to sa yo kuro ka to furu papo lai lai o ni le loye ninu ima ijele are you going to count uh, 1003 plus uh, 3029 ba lo se be ka egbero ati metala ati egbero meta ati merinla nigba to ba fe ka gbogbo re pa when you are st- when you are sitting by the stones and by the sticks of matches and you are counting and counting you will never go far nigba to ba joko ti ka mo kakuta ka mo kagisa na o ni le dagba toju bo that's what he was telling the old testament people on to so fa we eyan ma je mo lai lai ni if you sit down by the toys oni to ba joko ni bi omo lai if you sit down by the counting of stones to ba joko ti ka mo kakuta if you sit down by the killing of animals ka mo pa eran if you sit down by 
by the holy place and the courtyard and the holy of holies. If you see them by the ark of the covenant. If you see them by the tabernacle and the temple built in the old covenant. If you see them on laying hands on the animal before your sins can be forgiven. If you see them by carrying the ark of the covenant to the battlefield before you can find the wall. If you see them by the old covenant rituals and ceremonies, you will never go far in spiritual matters. He said, a new day has arrived. A new covenant has come. Make your transfer immediately. And come into the new covenant. Look at it now from Hebrews chapter 9, reading from verse 1. As the Lord gives us permission today, we'll go through to verse 14. And there are three points we're going to look at. Number one, service in the sanctuary of the old covenant. Number two, significance of limitations in the old covenant. Number three, salvation through the blood of Christ. Look at number one. Service in the sanctuary of the old covenant. He said then, verily, the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first, wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. After the second veil, the tabernacle which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that bordered and the table of the covenant. And over it the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat of which we cannot now speak particularly. If you will remember, he had already told the Hebrew people that the old covenant was a shadow waiting for, pointing to the and the arrival of the substance. And many of those uh, Old Testament people and many of the new people in the New Testament who were still holding on to the old covenant, they didn't understand the significance of all the rituals and the ceremonies and all the things they said in the old covenant. They must have been asking, was, does it mean the old covenant had no purpose? Valueless? Of no worth? Oh, he wanted to tell them it had a purpose. And it was good in its own period. In fact, he tells us in verse 1, he started by saying, then, he said, at that time, in the time of the old covenant, 
there. Then he said, Verily, assuredly, certainly, the, the first covenant had ordinances not of human service, of divine service. He was telling them it was given by God. All those services, all those ceremonies, they were divinely appointed. But then he said it was a worldly, the Greek says, earthly sanctuary. That is, it was a sanctuary sanctuary here in the world on earth at that time. And therefore the first thing he wanted to emphasize to them that it wasn't the, it didn't originate from Moses or from Aaron. It was God that gave it to them. It had ordinances of divine service. And look at it to show you that it was God himself that commanded them that gave it to them. In uh, Exodus chapter 25. Exodus chapter 25. Exodus chapter 25. Let's look at verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, But you speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering and every man that giveth it willingly with his such shall ye take my offering. You see, it was appointed by the Lord, ordained by the Lord. Verse 8, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. That was demanded by God. He told them that they should make the sanctuary. It wasn't something carnal. It wasn't something that they just wanted to do by themselves. God commanded it. Chapter 26, verse 1. Of that same Exodus. Moreover, thou shalt make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twined linen and blue and purple and scarlet with the cherubims of the cunning work that thou shalt make them. It won't be as a titame was here, gonna as a ball look away. Atiti aso alaro atiti elesi aluko atiti ododo ti o unti awon kerubu isi olona ni ki iwo ki o se won The Lord demanded that there will be a tabernacle Olorun bere pe ki won ki o pa ago Remember it was an ordination of the Lord an ordinance of the Lord Ra ti gbagba pe ilana ti idasi idasi le Olorun ni Pastati and thou shall rear up the tabernacle according to the fashion thereof which was showed thee in the mount it was a way I got now rule that gave me a prayer you will see once again here that it was the Lord commanding them saying that they will make the tabernacle you know the purpose make a sanctuary that I may dwell among you so that in that local place anywhere you are there you know that if you want to meet with the Lord the Lord will be there to meet with you. And he also told them that they will make an ark of the covenant. Then that ark of the covenant, there will be a lead, there will be a cover. On that cover, they will carve angels, two angels. 
coming of those angels will be facing one another with their wings stretched, touching one another. And then it says those angels, they will so count them, they will be looking down on that uh, box, on that uh, thing they were to make like the Ark of the Covenant. He called that lead, that cover, he called it the mercy seat. And then the Ten Commandments were put inside the box, inside the ark. But then he put those angels in between the mercy seat and that ark. And then he said, it is there I will meet with you. Already you can see the limitation there. Because God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit. And everywhere, wherever you are, God is everywhere. But at the primary school level, at the kindergarten level, at the time when they were just counting stones and counting sticks, and there was the blood of animals, there was a particular place they must get to before they could meet the Lord. That had to be temporary. It is a new covenant when the reality has come whether now you are in Nigeria or you are in Jerusalem or you are in London or you are in Ghana anywhere you are now whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved but at that time the limited time they were to have the tabernacle where God will meet with them Exodus 26 verse 33 and thou shall hang up the veil under the touches thou shall make a dam- that thou may, mayest bring in hither within the veil the ark of the testimony and the veil shall divide unto you between the holy place and the most holy <laughs> Now you can see he's telling them about the compartments, about the divisions of the tabernacle. It is an illustrated to the building in which we are. You know that if you are coming from outside, there is a fence around. You come in through the gate into the compound, into the courtyard. For their tabernacle, that was the situation. There was a courtyard where all the people that were going to make sacrifices, slaughter the animals, shed the blood, they could come into that place where they will be able to do their sacrifice. That was the place where their sins were forgiven. The blood was shed for them. And through the blood that was shed for them, their sins were taken away. They knew that meant redemption. They knew that meant salvation. And behold the lamp of God which has taken away the sin of the world. That outer court is the shadow pointing to the reality of our salvation in Christ. And then when you come to the tabernacle proper now, the tabernacle proper was like a rectangle. 
Ori go. But it's divided into two. At the first part you will get to coming from the outer court is called the holy place. Now you can tell holy place. When we say something is holy place, that's related to holiness. There was a table there, a table of showbread. And the, the priest will bring 12 loaves of bread on that table of showbread. And they will put that there for the whole week. On the Sabbath day, they will remove that bread. The priests were the representatives of the people. They, they will eat that bread. That Sabbath day, they will bring in new loaves of bread there. Every time, loaves of bread must be there. While they are taking out the one for the old week, they will bring in the one for the new week. The priest, they did that for many, many years, many generations. They never knew the meaning. Until Jesus came and said, I am the bread of life. Now that the reality, the real bread from heaven has come, all the bread you are putting on the table every Sabbath day and removing it, all that is not necessary anymore. That's the bread for the old covenant, the bread of the New Testament is the bread come from heaven the Lord Jesus Christ, if you want to live, you will eat of me and live it was in that holy place where they had the censer and they were always burning incense before the Lord did they understand what they were doing no they couldn't fully understand until you come to the New Testament and it tells us that that is a prayer of the saints ascending unto God. Now Jesus has come and now he says we can pray to him everywhere. In fact, it now says the new covenant pray without ceasing. Outer courts for their salvation. The holy place for our sanctification. Where you're always taking of the bread of life. After, after you are sanctified and your heart is always designing the bread of life and your heart is always rising up to God in prayer and there is a link between heaven and earth you are risen from the dead spiritually with Christ you are designing the things that are born in verse 33 we read of the most holy place it's also called the Holy of Holies. It's, it's called the holiest of all. You follow outer court for salvation. The, most, the holy place for our sanctification. Now the most holy. That most holy. The ordinary priests were not allowed to go there. Only the high priest God went there once a year. There was a veil, a thick veil, demarcating, separating that most holy place from the holy place. And nobody in Israel could ever go there. Do you understand that? the children of Israel could have forgiveness. They could have salvation. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. 
and all that is within me bless his holy name who forgiveth all thine iniquities who healeth all thy diseases that's in the outer court they could have salvation could they have sanctification oh yes they could have sanctification the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord with all your heart all your soul and all your mind the sanctification who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord who shall dwell in the holy place they that have clean hands salvation and a pure heart sanctification and then you remember Isaiah he saw the Lord seated in the temple who is me and a man of unclean leaves and then the angel flew to him and took a life call from the altar and said this has touched thy lips thy sin is taken away thy sin is poured yes they could be sanctified and the way shall be there the way of the Lord it shall be called the highway of holiness the unclean shall not go up therein but the way fearing men do foolish they shall not hear therein oh yes they could be sanctified the outer court salvation the holy place sanctification now the most holy the holy of holies the holiest of all they could not enter they could not receive the holy ghost baptism because the reality the new covenant had not come and although Moses was desirous he said if all the people of God could be filled with the Holy Ghost and all of them could be prophets but it couldn't happen at that time that was all covenant and Joel told them don't bother yourself you are now in the old covenant afterward later in the latter days in the last days Christ must come first do you remember what happened when Jesus died on the cross? The veil that we're talking about separating the holy place from the holy of holies was divided into two, making a way that now the New Testament has begun. If you want the Holy Ghost now, go in. It's not just for the high priest once in a year. You can go to the holy of holies now and get into the direct presence of the Almighty God. That's the reason for the most holy place. And they could only get to the holy place, but now at the point of the death of Jesus Christ, the new covenant was established, the veil in the temple was rent into two, and now the way is available for everyone. Now you can enter in. All things are now ready. Now the it was limited the unlimited now has come they stayed outside now we can come in come back to Hebrews chapter 9 Look at verse 2. For there was a tabernacle made. The first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the show and the showbread, which is which is called the sanctuary. 
ati tabili ati akara ifi ho gbe wa eyi ti an pe ni ibi mimo they didn't understand oyi o ye won that it was just a symbol pe ami lasan ni it was just a tie apere lasan ni the tabernacle itself represented jesus christ agbo fun rara re o nduro fun christi do you realize there was only one door in that tabernacle njo je mo pe ile fo kan lo wa ninu ago na do you know there is only one door that leads to the kingdom of god o wa ye o pe ona kan na lo to ka si ijoba olorun jesus said i am the door I am the way. Anybody that will come to the Father, he will come by me. Jesus so gba gba pe emi ni enu ona na, emi ni ona na. Enikeni to ba npe ti ati wa sodo baba o gbodo pa gba ipase. He said there was a candle stick there. O so pe o pa fiti la wa le. What did the candle stick for? O pa fiti la ni ki lo wa fun. It is the light. I mean ni. Do you remember what Jesus said? O wa na tin ti Jesus. I am the light of the world. He that followeth after me will not walk in darkness. O so pe emi ni ma le aye eni to ba nto mi leyin ki yo rin ni He said there is a table and a showbread. O so pe tabili wa ati akara ifi ho. Jesus Christ said your fathers dead the manna in the wilderness and now they are dead. I am the bread of life. If any man takes of this bread he will live forever. Jesus so gba gba pe awon baba yin je manna ni agidi won ti ku bayi sugbon. Eni ti o ba je akara to ti orun wa ti se emi ki yo kuro yo wa ti la. Now you can come and take of the Lord Jesus Christ and you will live forever. Ni bayi o wa le wa ki o wa gba Jesus wa si wa ititi aye. In verse three, after the second veil the tab Or, uh, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all. Esa eketa ati le ya so eke lekeji. Ona ni agoti ankwe ni ibi mi majula. That's what I've been talking to you about. Oti moti sofu ani tarani. Which had the golden censer. Ti oni awo turari wura. Now he talks about the golden censer there. Ni be oso ni pa awo awo turari wura. Gold there represents purity. Wura ni be oso ni pa awo fufu. And the censer is a container of the incense that will that you offer unto the Lord. Awo turari yani onto jepe wa kout wura disi nuti wa biru basi oluwa. He's talking about the purity of Jesus Christ. Oso ni pa awo fufu Jesus. And it is through him alone now we can pray. Ni pa sere ni kaba ena le badura. And we offer our incense of prayer unto the Lord through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Asi ma bi. He says, and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold. Wherein the golden pot which had the manna. And the ones round that body. And the tables of the covenant. Now he comes to that special ark of the covenant, the ark of testimony. And he tells us that it had the gold. Golden pot having manna inside it. Oh, so if we go only to Kowura, the only manna in Nore. If you have studied the Old Testament, the Old Testament people they probably could not understand. Because you see, if you kept that manna overnight, it will get rotten. Worms will be coming out. The story of manna is about Pama di Jokeji. You the bad guy. But God, but God told them to keep part of that manna, which ordinarily will get spoiled the following day. Put it in the pot and put it in the ark of the covenant, and it was preserved for years, many, many years, without getting bad. So, but manna to jack with the baby silent, the joke is you the bad guy. All of the one you can want for manna, you cannot. Sinu akutiiri, osi wani be for kolo kodo la the bad guy. A symbol of Jesus Christ to come, which will, that will never go bad. The same yesterday and today and forever. Akpere Jesu Kristi eni ti o wa to je pe yo wa lai di baje okan na lana loni ati titi aye and it contained Aaron's rod that body apa Aaron to ru di tun wa ni be you already you read it in the old testament o ti ka ninu ma je mo lai lai children of Israel were arguing awon mo Israel wa nji yan who is called of God who is appointed of God ta do lorun pe ta lo lorun yan ga who is a singular peculiar one that God has laid his hand upon ta le nikan na ni patu eni ti olorun And God said there will be no argument and no murmuring again. Let all the elders of the tribe of Israel, twelve of them, let them bring their all. Let Aaron bring his own all. Let them write their names on each of those rolls. And keep it in the sanctuary till the following day. But in the following day, Aaron's rod had budded. Means there were fruits and things wanting coming out already. Out of a rod 
that was not planted. Lori aokpa ele ita o fidi re. Out of a rod that had been cut down. Lori aokpa ele ita ati gelule. It was fresh as if it had not been cut. Oda bi otu tu yo yo bi gita o ti gila. The other ones had been cut also, but they died, and there was no life coming to them. Awa yoku ita ati geba kana wati ku iye kako jaja de la rawa. And the following day when they came together, no joke ye ti bobo wawa kora. They picked the first one, the second one, the third one. All of them, they all had died without any fruit, without any life coming on. Awa mwa koko eke jie keta gogo re pata lo ti ku kosi nga kan bi ye nara re man. When they came to Aaron's rod, ni bate wa de biti o kwa roni. It was fresh. O tutu. As if you didn't cut it down. As if it had not died. It had fruit. It had leaves. It had everything. That the rod would have had if it wasn't cut. And then God said, keep that in the covenant. Leave it there perpetually for the children of Israel. They didn't go to plant it. It was not uh, hedged into or bordered into or grabbed into. So, any tree and the fruit remains and the freshness remains I wonder why the children of Israel didn't understand that this was a symbol of Jesus Christ caught down to die but everybody that is caught down and dies like that none of them they don't resurrect but Jesus Christ he came alive from the grave and he was resurrected and the fruit of it we see it on the day of Pentecost. We see the fruit of the healing. We see all the fruit before he died. Everything that was taking place after he had been cut down, he rose again. His name is still working wonders. Everything was pointing to Christ. Christ. <laughs> Agogo e rome ni ati aba gelu le to kube e gogo walo ma onse beti a ki iri pa wama. So ba ni ti Jesu Christi le yin gati a gelu le ti a se kure. Lo jo keta, o jinde, a wanre e sore, a ri lo jo Pentecost. A ri e sore, la anre a wang ke feri. Ti ti a ye ti ti di se sin yi oru kore, sin si se yano. O ye wa yi, o ye wa yi, mi bi o ye o se yi a wang yi a wang yi. In verse 5, over it, in the cherubims, the cherubims of glory overshadowing the mercy seat. Ni e se e karo, a ti lo ri re ni a wang kerubo go. You see that again, the mercy seat. What do we need mercy for? We deserve judgment. We are broken the commandments of the of the law. And the Lord said, if you come to meet me on the basis of the commandment, you are broken the covenant. But the mercy seat is there. He said, I will meet with the children of Israel at the mercy seat. And you know that's pointing to Jesus Christ. It's through him we can have mercy from God. You notice know, in the writing of the epistles. Grace, peace, mercy be unto you through the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the mercy seat. Look at Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. And so you can see what this passage is telling us. The writer, the inspired writer was saying, no, it wasn't that the old covenant was useless. The thing is, everything in the old covenant was pointing to Jesus Christ to come. And now that Jesus Christ, the reality, the substance has come, drop the shadow, drop the type, drop the symbol, and take the reality. Your husband traveled a long journey. And while he traveled, he left his photograph behind. And he said, Well, you, if you try to forget the way I look, that's my photograph. 
every time you sit by that photograph you look at that photograph and every time you look at that photograph you remember him and it's far far away but the photograph is with you one day after a long time your husband arrived and then your husband came home while your husband came home and other people were rejoicing the Gentiles, the people outside were rejoicing here you are the Jew sitting in your room and the husband has now come and you sit, you didn't even show any emotion to welcome him you were holding the photograph and you are occupied by the photograph and you are looking at the photograph and you are sitting down there and here is the husband standing in front of you and your eyes are still glued to the photograph you are making a terrible mistake you don't need the old photograph again look at your husband in front of you the old covenant was a picture it was a symbol and before the new covenant came before the husband came they were looking at the photograph they were looking at the picture now the reality has come now the husband has come abandon the photograph and embrace your husband and, and embrace the reality well i needed to spend time on that so you will understand because many people don't understand all these details of the old covenant let's now go to point number two very quickly the significance of limitations in the old covenant look at it from verse 6 now when these things were thus ordained the priest went always into the first tabernacle accomplishing the service of God it's talking about what they did at that time how they went into the first tabernacle that's the first part the compartment of the tabernacle but into the second when the high priest alone once every year not without blood which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people why that limitation why only once a year why only the high priest why was it not available and open to everybody else look at verse 8 the holy ghost this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while as the first tabernacle was still yet standing that is the place into the holy of holies was still not available to everybody while the old covenant was still in force and while the tabernacle was still reared all then he tells us in verse 9 which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience he said it was so limited it could not even perfect them which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until you see that imposed on them not forever but until the time of reformation 
ti ara nikan ti a fi lele titi ori bayi ti a fi lele titi fi di igba ton se that means then very clearly if you look at verse 8 and you look at verse 10 it was only for that time and it was a limited thing but now that reality has come every limit has been taken out of the way ele to wa sun mo pe ni ese ikejo to ba wo ati ese ikewa ni igba ye o wa fun odi won igba ye sugba nisisin yi gbogbo odi won lati mu kuro look at galatians chapter 3 wo wo galatia ori keta galatians chapter 3 reading from verse 23 galatia ori keta ese iketa le logo it says but before faith came we were kept under the law shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed so ba ki igbagbo to de ati pa wa mo labe ofin ase wa mo de igbagbo ti a nbo wa fi han he said faith was the one to come but before faith arrived we were under the old covenant we were under the jewish they were under the jewish law oni igbagbo ni eyi tin bo wa sugbon ki igbagbo igan o to wa de ati se won mo sinu awon ilana ti awon jew verse 24 wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto christ that we might be justified by faith ese ikerin le logun nitori na O fi ti je oluko ni lati mu wa lati mu ni wa sodo Kristi ki a le da wa lare nipa igbagbo You see all those things in the old covenant the law the rituals the ceremonies the symbols the types they were to lead us to Christ Ori gbangba pe gbogbo awon on to wa ninu ma je mo lai lai awon ilana awon ofin awon apere ati gbogbo awon nkan to wa ni be won da bi oluko ni lati mu wa wa sodo kristi they were sign posts won je awon itoni opo itoni to christ lati so ka wa si kristi the sign post is not christ but is pointing to christ opo to nto ni ye gan ko ni kristi sugbon o nto ka wa sodo kristi it's like if you are going to the ibtc se lo da bi igba to fe lo si ibtc when you go to the crossroad at a particular place ni igba to ba de kori takan ni see right in there IBTC International Bible Training Center wari ti akosi be pe IBTC le eko bibeli fun gbogbo agbaye they will draw an arrow wa wa ti a amekan ti o kori sibe that is sign ball eleyi ni oko to so somebody is going to the IBTC ti enikan ba lo si IBTC and then he gets to the crossroad over there you know the place because you have been there and then he stands at the at the sign post there ti enikan ba lo si IBTC to ba de ikori takan iwo mo be so ba nigba to wa ri won o de bi ti a fi he stands there sunshine rain he's standing there i will say why are you here he says i as ibtc i want to be and i have discovered ibtc we say this one is fine but the ibtc is still in front of you it is just sign board that you have here ibtc he says no i don't want anybody to mislead me i have seen this sign i will stay here and he stays at the signboard there and you leave him there and you go to the IBTC the old covenant was signboard the ark of the covenant was a signboard the table of showbread was a signboard all those tabernacle rituals and the lambs and everything they were killing it was signboard pointing to the reality pointing to Jesus Christ Salvation comes through Christ. Sanctification comes through Christ. Holy Ghost baptism comes through Christ. The riches of the kingdom comes through Christ. Don't stand at the rituals. Don't stand at the signboard. Move on and get to the reality and get to Christ. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring God's son to Christ. That we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. 
Have you noticed what happened? It when you the first time you go, went to the IBTC, you were looking at signboard, looking at signboard, looking at signboard until you got there. What happens today when you are going to the IBTC? The signboards are there, you don't even look at them. Because you know the way now, you just go straight to the IBTC without even looking whether signboard is there or whether signboard is not there. Now we know Christ. Now we have his name. Now we pray in his name. Now we are blessed in his name. We have got into the kingdom through his name. What do you need the signboard for? The old covenant is abolished. The new covenant is established. Let's look at point number three. As we look at point number three, we are not being told that the way into the holiest has been made open. Now the Holy Ghost is available for you. Now everything in the covenant, in the new covenant is available for you. Now we are told from verse 11. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 11. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come, but a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. So, but, you see the, the mention of another tabernacle now a more perfect tabernacle that one has now replaced as Christ he has now replaced the other earthly carnal physical tabernacle in verse 12 neither by the blood of goats and cows but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us you see the comparison old covenant the blood of goats the blood of cows now new covenant his own blood he has now entered into the holy place don't misunderstand the holy place we read about in the old in the Old Testament, that one was on earth here. Now, he now has entered into the holy place that's now heaven, in the presence of God. Having obtained eternal redemption for us. Every year they had to make their own sacrifices. Their redemption was temporary. It was limited. It was over a short time. And they had to do that every day of atonement every year. But now he has obtained for us eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and of the ashes of the of an ephah sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. He's talking about what they did in the Old Testament. He said all that they could do in the Old Testament, all that was a, was a, for the purifying and the cleansing and the sanctifying of the flesh external. In verse 14, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God to purge, not your flesh, your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Now, 
He said, it was external in the old covenant, it is internal in the new covenant. Therefore, something better has been given to all. Jesus has made a way to come right to the presence of God now. Look at uh, chapter 10 of Hebrews, verse 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. The old covenant people, not everybody could even enter. Only the high priest could enter there once in a year. Because that was the place that had the Shekinah glory of God and the fire that was burning every time and uh, only that high priest could go there once a year. That was the very presence and the very indication, the very evidence of the mighty power of God. But now he says, although Aaron and the high priest will go there once a year timidly and fearing, we now, there is no fear because Jesus has made a way with boldness we enter into the holiest. In verse 20, he says, By a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil that is to say, his flesh. That means now what was not available for them in the old covenant is available for us in the new covenant. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 20. Now the God of peace that brought up again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd and uh, of the sheep that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will. You see, he says now, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, we can be made perfect. And now we have unlimited blessing. In particular, the Holy Ghost that was not available to them is now available to us. In John chapter 7, verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man says, let him come unto me and drink. He said, if any man says, it's not available for any man, every man. Let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this speak he of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive for the holy ghost was not yet given because that jesus was not yet glorified so ba o so eyi ni ti emi ti awon ti o gba gbo mbo wa gba nitori akoti fi emi mi ma fun ni but now Jesus has been glorified. Everything is now available for us. Leave the shadows, come to the substance. Leave the picture, come to the perfect one. Leave the rituals and come to reality. Leave the limitations of the old covenant and come to the unlimited resources and riches of the new covenant. 
mu lai lai ati ayeye re sile ki o wa wa sinu ilode won ma je mu ti do ati oro pray like the old testament people timidly approaching god ma se ma sojo tabi ko ma beru awon eniya ma je mu la lati ban tolorun god he has no more given us the spirit of fear of timidity he has given us the spirit that is of a sound mind and love and power ko fun wa ni emi eru ma ta bi ma beru si gba ni se se yi o ti fun wa ni emi ife ati agbara ni no we need a human high priest now to represent us before god Every believer is now a priest in the sight of the Lord. Ako ni lo alufa ta bi olori alufa kankan mo lati ma soju wa ni waju Olorun ni bayi gogo ni gbagbo ni alufa fun Olorun. In the time of Elijah there was only one single Elijah that could do what he did. Ni akoko Elijah, Elijah kan so so na ni be lati se nto se yen. Now every one of us if you want to be you can be like Elijah. So gbo gbo wa bayi to ba fe di Elijah fun Olorun le de Elijah. You can now pray more than all those other people pray. O le gbadura ju bi awon eyan wa ye se gbadura lo. The gate is now open for you. Why are you outside? Why are you suffering? Why are you having guilt? Why are your sins not taken away? Why are you not ready for heaven? Anybody that wants to enter can now enter. Whosoever now shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And whatsoever now you ask in the name of Jesus, He will do. In fact, now He that believes in Me, the works I do now He shall do. And greater works than this shall he do because I go to the Father. There is, there is no limit anymore. There is no fear anymore. You are not sitting by the shadow anymore. You are not looking at rituals anymore. You are not killing animals anymore. You are not going to a physical tabernacle anymore. You can now enter into the holy of holies by the blood of the Lamb. What a privilege! What a promise! What resources we have in the Lord! What a great promise he has given unto us. All things are now available for you. Why will you be suffering as if you are like an orphan? All your sins can be forgiven. Your heart can be cleansed and purified. You can be baptized in the Holy Ghost. You can have the gifts of the Spirit. You can serve the Lord without limitation. You can live your life without fear. You can approach directly to the presence of God. You can claim the promises that Old Testament people did not have. You can be a miracle yourself and a miracle worker. You can be an instrument in the hand of God. The fire fire of God can be burning in your heart. He can make your body now the temple, the tabernacle. He can live in you now and make you the holy place. He can be walking in you and talking in you now. He can be me now the light and the fire even through you now the shekana glory of God is no more in the temple or that is made with hand it is now resident in you God is no, no more saying I'm dwelling in the physical tabernacle God is not saying I will live in you I will dwell in you I will walk in you I will move in you you can be a tarot to the devil now. You are no more a slave under the old covenant. You are now a child of God. You are a son. You are a daughter. You are the promises of God. Now you can enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Not only to enter into a holy life. You can enter into the holiest of all by the blood of the Lamb. What's the limitation of your life? Throw away the limitations of the old covenant. And come into the unlimited resources of the new covenant.